Hey, welcome to a new series of videos where I create an app from scratch. I hope you all had a good rest over the holidays. I'm optimistic about this year and thought to plan out 2021. I came across this uh, article from Fast Company where it talks about breaking down your long-term goals into monthly, weekly and daily tasks. It's a great read. I'll leave a link in the description. Usually when I write down the tasks, it's a big list of things without much of an order. Something like this. <laughs> and I thought I should make an effort into structuring this planning. And that's when I thought of a mind map. I've used mind maps before on and off. Mind maps are a great way to break down your ideas into smaller parts. It helps to organize your thoughts and have a holistic view, whatever you are trying to solve. I was looking at various mind map tools around and they all are geared towards the visual aspects and not enough integration and execution. For example, once you detailed out your tasks to do, how do you add them to a calendar or a timeline? There isn't much support for these in existing apps. So here I am having a go at building a mind map from scratch. How hard can it be? <laughs> that always comes back to bite me. In basic terms, all mind maps start with a parent node and then expand into multiple nodes like a tree, like here. So a tree data structure is perfect for representing this. This is a basic data structure in computer science and has many uses. I think using it for a mind map is one of the most straightforward ones. With that in mind, let's create a minimum viable app. I start as usual with the blank Flutter project and then create a widget that hosts a custom painter. Just as before, I will use Flutter Canvas to draw the nodes. Let's take a look at the code. Here we are in our main Dart file and we are calling mindmap widget, which looks like that. So mindmap widget is a stateful widget and it contains a few things. So when it's complete, for this part, this is what it would look like. We can have a restart. So you can click to create a new node and then you can create multiple nodes like this. And then each node can have children like this Notice that this, this expands to have all the nodes in the middle. So you can have multiple nodes like this. And so on. So not only that, you can double click on a node and then you can type And so on. So in order to do that, we need the way of getting the text input from uh, from the keyboard, and that's handled by um, these variables: focus node and then the controller uh, bits. Our build function looks like this. There is a whole lot of things going on, but focus on this part where we set the custom painter object. Uh, we have attached a painter called mindmap paint painter and we pass in uh, a tree of nodes to it so basically we maintain uh, the whole tree on this stateful widget and then when there is a change in the widget uh, when there's a change in the node we pass uh, that in the painter and then repaint uh, let's take a look at the data structure over here, which we use for the tree. So it's quite simple, actually. Uh, it contains a value. Uh, that is where we set the uh, text value. And then has it has a, a list of 
children of uh, nodes and these things are uh, the offset rectangle visual size I will get to that later these are for uh, computing visual um, dimensions and then we have depth first search which is uh, quite simple um, it's a recursive call to search for a node uh, with a given predicate a predicate is a function that returns uh, a boolean value so we can uh, we can set what the criteria we want to meet and if that criteria is met then this predicate returns true otherwise it is uh, false so depth first search goes and selects the first node that meet the criteria and then returns that node we use the depth first search for things like tap gesture or double tap gesture that is when we want to select the node that was tapped on so let's go into on tap up so some of these uh, callbacks support the details as in tap up details has the position of the the pointer so we can make use of that to find out which node this belongs to so that's what happens here so what i'm doing here is that i searched the tree from the top from from here on search every node and see which one was hit uh, so that for that i pass this uh, lambda function or a predicate which goes and checks if the point is inside the rectangle so that's when we need that rectangle visual representation of this node okay so if that if the point is inside that node then it will return and um, sometimes it is possible that you tap outside any of the nodes so for example on the background like this uh, and then if that is the case then there shouldn't be any nodes present so that's what we check for here so if if it was tapped inside a node then uh, i am adding a child node to it that's how you add to it and then let's take a look at the double tap which is very similar again i go and depth first search the whole tree to select the node that was tapped and if that is the case then i set the edit mode so you set the edit mode you have to set the focus node focus or unfocus and then in the build text field it's over here that's a whole lot of things that is going on in here but uh, in basic terms it needs a focus node a controller and a callback so that's where the um, the text is handled okay this is uh, very simple so if the focus uh, variable is set then i return a text field otherwise a container let's take a look at how this is actually uh, drone so this is the data structure part so we haven't thought about how these things are represented on the screen yet so in the painter I'm passing in the root of the tree and the rest of these uh, functions are quite simple actually even though there are a lot of it so the first thing to note is that I go and draw a background which is uh, quite simple you know we've done this few times it's a linear gradient going from bottom left to the top right and then there are two colors that I selected uh, previously as well. So basically it draws a shade from this end to that end and you can select the colors. And then we go into drawing cells. So cells, this is a cell and first thing to do is to measure the tree. So what, why do we need to measure the tree? That is because we want to keep the tree balanced over the center or uh, the vertical center of the screen for example when I add more nodes to child node something like this uh, this should rebalance itself so that all the nodes are centered on the screen so that's what this does the measure let's take a look at the measure cell so for a given node each of the children cursively measure its size so what this brings back is the size the sub tree takes for example if you are here and then call measure tree the sub tree contains all of these 
all of these nodes. So it goes into there and then checks the subtree of that and so on. So if you go in here, it will check the sub uh, measure the subtree of this. Then I compute the visual size and then return it. So that's what happens inside this. This is a recursive call um, and it measures the, the height it takes for the whole subtree. So uh, the first thing to do is to measure that. So starting from the, the root node, I go into each of the ch child nodes like this and then measure the sizes and then when it gets here, it gives me the whole height of the whole subtree. And also, it also records the size of that uh, subtree at each of the levels. So for example, if it is here, it will go and measure the size of these, this subtree, and then it will give that value, that height into this node. So that's what's happening in here. Right, after measuring, we go on to draw the cells. So this is again a recursive call. It's again uh, quite simple actually. You draw a rounded rectangle. So the reason why I'm drawing this twice is because I'm drawing a filled rectangle and then a, a bordered rectangle. And then I draw text centered, the text inside this rectangle but centered. Uh, let's take a look at how the text is rendered. Um, so, as usual, we have a measure text, which gives us a text painter. Um, after applying the span and the style, uh, and then it returns the uh, text painter with the layout performed, so that we have the width and the height of um, the text, uh, the size of the text that you take so then it could center on the position that we are passing in uh, that's what happens there so all these things we have come across in our previous videos if you haven't seen them uh, please have a look uh, links are in the description so in the draw cell uh, I go and draw each cell so that is drawing the cell uh, once the, once something is drawn, I also record the the screen sizes. This is quite important because we use these rectangles to identify where the gestures happen. And then recursively go and draw these things. So here what happens is that um, for each of the children, I go and uh, draw the cell recursively. And also drawing a line. So basically from where it was at the end of this to beginning of uh, this rectangle. That's what happens in the draw cell. So there are lots to do. Uh, I'm just, you know, this is, this is the basic things that we want to do. Uh, right now it cannot delete nodes. I will get to that uh, in the next video. And also um, what we uh, can't do is to move the nodes around. So it is, um, they are all static. Um, if I wanted to move this node to this node, it cannot be done here at this point. But in the later videos, we will get to that. The premise over here is to get the most basic thing done. So that would be to uh, be able to click on the screen and create a node, set the text um, and so on. So in the, in the next videos, we get to uh, how to delete a node uh, and also to save this mind map so join me on the next video uh, to learn more about it uh, thanks for watching if you like what i create please like share and subscribe to the channel uh, see you in the next one